Hey there, friends. It is Tuesday, February 16th, 2021. Meteorologist Shane Smith here with you. What a day of weather. We've uh, been seeing snow fly across a good chunk of Kentucky today, especially central and eastern Kentucky. Power outages galore. Heavy ice still bringing down trees and power lines. Um, still thousands without power. That was a big storm we just got through, and unfortunately, Mother Nature is saying, hey, we're just going to pour it on. Another one, starting tomorrow. <sighs> Can somebody just tell Elsa you're sorry, please? All right, so let's talk about what's going on. Winter storm watch uh, out for a good chunk of the state starting late tomorrow going through Friday morning. This will likely get upgraded to winter storm warnings and probably some winter weather advisories uh, down along the Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia border. We'll get into why that is uh, here in a minute. Right now, it is cold. It is oh so cold out there. These are actual air temperatures uh, as of 6 o'clock. Lexington, 12 degrees, 14 in London and Somerset, Bowling Green, uh, 16 in Paducah, 16 in Owensboro. The local warm spot in the state, 21 down in Middlesboro. And I think the last time I looked at the Mesonet sensor up on Black Mountain, it was at 23. So Black Mountain, once again, the warmest spot in the state. Wow. That's all I have to say to that. Now, a few lingering snow showers will taper off as we go throughout the uh, evening tonight. I think tomorrow we actually start off dry. We may go clear for just a little bit tomorrow before that next storm system moves in. And if that happens, we may get close to zero for overnight lows. Otherwise, I'm thinking uh, low single digits uh, for lows overnight for most of the state. But if we clear out, we'll flirt with zero at the bare minimum. Wind chills will be about 5 to 10 below. It's going to be a very cold morning, especially for thousands of people uh, without power. Uh, there are a lot of shelters opening up. Um, check your local news media outlets for information about them. Um, but just uh, try to stay safe and stay warm, folks, because unfortunately, here comes round number three, currently through Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have been seeing the stories out of Texas, more than 4 million people without power. They're not used to this type of cold all the way down to Houston. For 34 right now, Houston. San Antonio, back over towards 32. What is this? This is a, a blast of winter of historic proportions, and we're going to continue to see that cold air and that snow head our way as we go through the overnight into tomorrow. Let's take a look at the models, and we're going to take a look at the NAM, show you how all this plays out. So we stay dry through the overnight. We start off your Wednesday morning dry. Then here comes the snow. We're about, oh, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. A few light snow showers possible. Then the bulk of the precipitation moves in after 8 o'clock in southern Kentucky, and then you see right around midnight, it is blowing up. Now, one thing to notice, mixed precipitation in the Cumberland Valley. There are still questions as to exactly the precipitation type, how much we're going to get of each, and where exactly the cutoffs are going to be. Have you heard this one before, friends? Yeah. We just can't have an easy this all snow storm. No, that, that would be too easy. You'll see the heavy precipitation continues all the way through Thursday. We should see a lull in the action Thursday afternoon before some wraparound snow uh, kicks in for Thursday evening and Friday morning. All right, let's show you the different models because they are all over the place. Here is the GFS. Freezing rain, about a tenth to a quarter of an inch uh, from Ashland back to Lexington down to Bowling Green. European model saying, what freezing rain? The NAM saying, a oh, quarter to a half inch, Eastern Kentucky, just where we don't need it. 
the high resolution rapid refresh showing about a tenth of an inch in the Cumberland Valley extending back uh, into Perry, Knott counties, southern Magothan County. How much snow? GFS says about three inches Paducah, two and a half Bowling Green, four E-Town, Lexington, up towards Huntington, maybe some uh, five inch readings up along the Ohio River in northeastern Kentucky, down an inch or two, Somerset, London, less in the Cumberland Valley because of the freezing rain and rain. The European model says, yeah, we're going to forget northern Kentucky on this one. We're going to put the bullseye on snow on southeastern Kentucky. If we had a solution to take, I'd probably take this one because I'd rather deal with the snow than more ice. But either one's not going to be good when it comes to power outages. The NAM, which did the best with the last storm, once we got within 24 hours of the storm, showing about 5 inches Bowling Green, 6 inches Lexington, pushing 7 or 8 up towards Ashland, maybe even some higher amounts, but then drastically lower right there along the Virginia border. Then the uh, high-resolution rapid refresh doesn't quite go out uh, as far as I'd like it to. It only goes out to Thursday at noon from this run. And it's showing most of the snow out in western Kentucky, but if you kind of project that forward in time, it looks to be taking a similar track to what the NAM is showing. So, the impacts. I think power outages, no matter what we get, no matter how exactly this plays out, it's going to be bad. It's just going to make a bad situation worse. We've still got thousands, if not 100,000 people without power in eastern Kentucky. Even if we get just another tenth to quarter inch of freezing rain, that's still going to bring down more trees and power lines. They're already so weak. Travel, I don't think it'll be quite as bad as last time, but it's still not going to be good. Uh, we're just not talking as high amounts of snow and ice as the last storm, but we've been hit with a one-two punch. Now this one's coming in for the uppercut, even though it may not be as strong, uh, may cause some issues. So here is my forecast, and it's probably going to be different than what you see from a lot of other locations. I'm not just strictly reading the models. I'm trying to handle the trends that we've seen with the last couple of storms. Um, this will change with tomorrow's update. This is my best first call. And I'm saying down along the Virginia border, we're going to go mainly rain, some light ice. Uh, north of that, coating to two inches of snow with a tenth of an inch to a quarter inch of ice. I think as you make that transition from ice to snow, that freezing rain to snow, and there's going to be a heavy band of snow set up, somewhere in Kentucky is going to pick up three to six inches, maybe even some locally higher amounts. We'll try to nail where that band's going to set up and see where the sky's the limit. But um, we got a lot of undercutting from sleet and freezing rain last time, so I'm a little uh, hesitant to pull the trigger on a big number again just based on how everything played out last time. Two to four inches, I think, for northern and western Kentucky seems like a pretty reasonable bet at this time. Like I said, forecast going to change. It's all dependent on that low. Uh, the good thing about this low versus the last one, it's over the continental U.S. right now, although some of that energy will be transferring uh, into the Gulf of Mexico as this first system down in Texas kind of dies and it spawns a new system uh, down around Louisiana. That'll be the one that impacts us, but hopefully, at least where this one's already on the board and organized, uh, the models will handle it a little better uh, than last time. But that is the best forecast I have for you at this point. Uh, tune in again about this time tomorrow or maybe just a little earlier. We'll say try to have that update out uh, around 5 or 6 o'clock tomorrow, East Coast time, uh, to keep you informed. Now's the time to get prepared, folks. Get out to the store, pack up on groceries. If you can find an alternative heat source, good luck. They're hard to find in Eastern Kentucky right now, but do what you can and uh, get ready to deal with it because round three is on the way. If you liked our videos, and we've had a lot of people watch over the last week, thank you guys so much. Keep hitting that like button. For folks that haven't subscribed yet, and that is the majority of our viewers, please, if you're enjoying our content, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Uh, we've been going for about a week strong now with this, and I'd like to keep it going and having more subscribers. 
makes it easier to keep going. So thank you guys so much. Uh, we're going to keep on continuing to cover Kentucky weather uh, here at the Kentucky Weather Vlog. And until next time, take care.